I'm actually a little jealous of you guys this week because you guys get to see the unit circle for the first time ever, right? Like you don't know what it is yet. You don't know the glory that is the unit circle trigonometric functions. So what we're talking about today is trigonometric functions. And you guys have probably seen a little of like sine and cosine and tangent and geometry. And if not, it is okay because we will be thoroughly explaining them over the next uh, week or so. Um, but where everything triangular stems from is a thing that we call the unit circle. Now, ultimately, what the unit circle is, is if you consider consider the unit circle, given by, for those of you who remember the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals something. And in this case, in a unit circle, that something is one, which is the radius of that circle. Whatever it is equaling is the radius of that circle. So we're saying that we have some circle with a radius of one unit. Do we know what the unit is? It doesn't really matter, right? What happens when I have a circle like that, hopefully this will work because I grabbed a, an image earlier. Hopefully, I thought I saved it to desktop. Apparently I didn't. Let's try it as a download. Did I do it? Uh, might have screwed the whole thing up. Maybe I saved it as a document. Mm. It's irrelevant. Say I have a graph. Very not straight line, but pretend in your mind that I have a straight line here. And on it, I have this circle. That's not too bad. Whose center is just zero, zero, right? It's just the center of the circle. And what I'm gonna say is that the distance from the center to the outside of the circle is just a unit of one, right? With the unit circle, well, actually, let's look at this. If I have a distance from here to here that's just one, I have a point here that is going to be an x value of one and a y value of zero, right? Again, if I have it going in the other direction, out here, it's still going to be a unit of one because it's a radius. So no matter where we go from the center of a circle, it's always going to be the same length. So if we look at this one, it would be negative one and zero, right? If we look at one unit up, right, up to, from here to here, this is also a unit of one because it's still a radius going to the outside of the circle. So it would have an X value of zero and a Y value of one. Same with if we went down with it, right? We would have an X value of zero and a Y value of negative one. Does that make sense? Like how I'm marking these points? If we know that that is one unit in every direction, we go, okay, well, if I just take it straight ahead on the X axis, I am going to have an X value of one and a Y value of zero, right? If I take it in the other direction, one unit, it's gonna be negative one, correct? You see what I'm saying with that? Does that make any sense? 
Can you wait until after I'm done with the lesson before you ask those questions? Because they will get lost in the chat. But yes, you can get extensions on all of them. Um, so here's the deal. Let's think about this in terms of radians, right? What do I know here? I know that this is zero degrees, right? And I know that if I go all the way around, it's 360 degrees, right? I also can say that it is what, zero pi, right? It's just zero, right? But we also know if we go all the way around, it's two pi, right? We learned that already. What happens when I go, halfway around, what do we get? I can tell you right now it's 180 degrees, but what else is it? In radians, what would it be if I go halfway around the circle? Yeah, it'd be pi, right? So what if I just go 90 degrees? What if I go halfway between zero and pi? What would this be? All right, let's make it easier first. What would be the halfway point between zero and 180 degrees? What would this be degrees wise? Ninety degrees. I'm gonna start calling on people if this is the only one who's gonna be answering the questions. So what would be ninety degrees in terms of radians? What would we call that? What's halfway between zero and pi? I'm gonna take a guess. Alina, take a guess at that one for me. Well, it wouldn't be 270 degrees because we're saying what happens between zero and pi? What is the equivalent of 90 degrees? Half of pi, right? If this is zero and this is pi and we're going halfway between them, this is half of pi, pi over two. So if we looked at this one right here, right between pi and two pi, it's basically like pi and a half, right? Does that make any sense? This would be, think about this. Here we go, pi. Here I have pi over two. This is pi, zero, pi over two, half of pi, pi. This would be pi and a half, right? So this would be like three pi over two. What we're wanting to look at is kind of how we break things up on the unit circle. Um, Say I have same circle, right? In this case, we were breaking this up in halves, right? Between zero and pi. What if we broke it up into 
four pieces between zero and pi, right? We have the same circle, but instead we're breaking it up into four pieces, right? Say I have 45 degree angles. So I'm cutting these 90 degree angles in half. So like this is 90, this is 180, this is zero, 270, right? But we also know that this is two pi, right? It's zero or two pi. We know that this is pi now. We know that this is pi over two. This is three pi over two. We already figured that out. We labeled it on the other thing. What is the halfway point between 90 and zero? Numerically, what, what's halfway between 90 and zero? What's half of 90? 45 degrees, right? If we came over here, it would be, gosh, I don't even remember, 90 plus 45. I don't even think of things in terms of degrees anymore. So um, 90 plus 45, blah, 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 50. 90 plus 45. So this would be uh, 135. I don't think of things in terms of degrees because I do everything in radians, right? Think about this though. Now I am looking at this in terms of how we broke it up, right? We broke this up evenly from zero to pi, evenly in four pieces, right? So this would be one fourth of pi. This would be two fourths of pi, but when I reduce that fraction, right? If I have two fourths of pi, that's the same as saying pi over two. This would be three pi over four, and this would be pi, right? Four pi over four is just pi. Here, I would have five pi over four because I'm breaking this up into fours. This would be six pi over fours, but when I reduced that fraction, I would just get three pi over two. So this would be seven pi over four. This would be eight pi over four, but eight pi over four is just 2 pi. Does that make some sense to you? Are you kind of seeing how I broke it up? I broke this up into four pieces. So each even piece is one fourth of pi. Aaliyah, do you see what I'm saying? That's okay. That's okay. I wasn't even calling on you this time, Alina. I said Aaliyah this time. <laughs> I wasn't going to pick on you twice. Aaliyah, are you starting to see it? Keep in mind, when you guys are not on camera, if you do not answer me when I ask a question, you are considered absent. And you will be marked absent. Because I need you to... Actually pay attention. What about if I break it up into six pieces from zero to pi? 
That's all right. It, this is being recorded. But at least you are answering. If I got to be here, you all got to be here. That's just how I see it. If I'm, I already know all this stuff. So here's another unit circle. We're still dealing with zero to one, right? And we know that this is zero and two pi. Sorry, I forgot the two. We know that this is pi over two. We know that this is pi itself. And we know that this is three pi over two, right? And we figured out those 45 degree angles before. What if I break from zero to pi up into six even pieces? Right, one here, one here, one here, one here, right? Think about this. This is 180, right? 180. 180 divided by six is 30. So every one of these is 30. This would be 30 degrees. This would be 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, right? We could do it all the way around the circle in these even increments. So if I'm making one, two, three, four, five, six pieces between here and pi, this first one is just one sixth of pi. This would be two sixths pi, but that's a reducible fraction, right? That just becomes pi over three. This would be 3 6 pi, which we know is 1 half. This would be 4 6 pi. And if I reduce that fraction, that becomes 2 pi over 3. This would be 5 6 pi. So 5 pi over 6. 6 6 pi is just pi. This is, what? This is 6 6 pi. So this would be 7 6 of pi. This would be 8 six of pi, which is four pi over three. Nine six of pi, when we reduce it, we get three pi over two. 10 six of pi is five pi over three. 11 six of pi is 11 pi over six. And then 12 six of pi is just two pi. And so all these numbers we get in radians that we're going to be mostly dealing with, we're breaking down very simply, right? We're just saying, okay, well, if I'm breaking this into six even pieces, well, each piece is worth one six, right? So the second piece is two six, three six, four six, five six, six six, right? Seven six, eight six, nine six, ten six, eleven six, twelve six makes two. Does that make some sense? I'm, I mean, this is like really basic fractions. We're just kind of going around a circle. I need to know that you guys are kind of understanding that part of it, how I'm, I'm numbering it. Make sense? Desiree, are you getting it? Are you seeing it? Kind of? Okay. So remember that this is on a graph, right? And each piece of this has a number value on a graph. And this, this part is where we're getting really important. So try and pay attention to this. It is also in your book. I will post a picture of this onto your PowerSchool page as well today. Because I just want you to be able to see it. I'm trying to go big because I've got to write a lot of stuff in it. So... Here, if I have my pi over 6, and here I have my pi over 4, and here I have my, what was this one? I can't remember. Pi over 3, I should just know that. 
been a long year. And this one we know is pi over two, right? On a graph, remember that this is a unit from zero to one. This has a point value right here of one, zero, right? With an X value of one and a Y value of zero. Well, each of these also have a point value, right? This one right here has an X value of radical three over two and one half, right? It's got a Y value of one half and it's got an X value of radical three over two. At 45 degrees, no matter where it is, right? If this is my 45 degree angle, like this is 45 degrees from here, this dead center, right, would be 45 degrees from here. This dead center would be 45 degrees from here. At your 45 degree angles, you always are going to have radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. Your x values and your y values are the same. Here, you would still have radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2 as your x and y values. The only thing is, is x right here is negative, right? And you can tell by what quadrant you are in that it is negative. Everything here in this quadrant is negative, right? So at our 45, we would have a value of radical 2 over 2 negative and negative radical two over two. It will never change, right? Here, you would have a positive X because you're on that side and you would have a negative Y. So at your 45, you would have radical two over two and then negative radical two over two. Does that make a little bit of sense? right? It's always going to have that same numerical value. Your X is still always going to be this distance away. Right here, when we're breaking it up into six, we've got radical three over one half. It's saying that the distance it's going X wise is radical three over two. The distance it's going y is one half up. Here, notice this is radical three over two and one half. Your opposite angle, your si if this is your 30 degree, your 60 degree angle will be the opposite of that. It'll be one half over radical three over two. These numbers are going to be very important to you because notice this is an X coordinate and this is a Y coordinate, right? On all of these, at each spot, we have a different X value and a different Y value, right? And each of these X and Y values correspond to a trig function. And we have six basic trigonometric functions. Six trig functions. And you've probably heard of them. One is sine, right? It's S-I-N-E, but when we punctuate it, we take the E off, right? The other is cosine. And then we have tangent. And each of those have an inverse function. Sine's inverse function is cosecant, right? Cosine's inverse function is secant. And tangent's inverse function is cotangent, cotangent. 
And each of these relate to an X and Y value on the unit circle. So if I have the sign of T. That could just be some point, right? It's just some random point, uh, right? Sign of T is equal to whatever Y value is on the unit circle. So if I had sine of pi over six, it would equal one half, right? If I was asked, well, what is sine of pi over 4, it would be radical 2 over 2. If I was asked, what is sine of pi over 3, it would be radical 3 over 2. It's whatever the y value is for that sign that they're, that, that point that they're looking for. Does that make sense? Cosine of t is equal to the x value. So if I had cosine of pi over 6, it would be radical 3 over 2. If I had cosine of pi over 4, I'm sorry, it would be radical 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 would be radical 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 would be 1 half. Tangent of some value of t is going to be x over y. I'm sorry, y over x, cotangent is x over y, is y over x. It's sine over cosine, right, is, is tangent. So in this case, if I looked at this, it would be, if it was for pi over 6, it would be one half over radical three over two. And we'd have to do the math on that. And, and we will in a few minutes. Um, now I said that cosecant, secant, and cotangent were inverses of them, which means that sine over t equals y and cosecant, I should write that in its abbreviated form so that you can see. Cosecant is CSC. Cosecant of T would be 1 over Y, right? It's just an inverse. So secant, which is the inverse of cosine, secant of T would be 1 over X. Cotangent of T would be the flip, right? This would be x over y. What do these mean numerically? Well, that's what we're going to play with a little bit here. And I've got a few minutes to show it to you. So think about this. We should mention that when we have these fractions, like with tangent and cotangent, x cannot equal 0 here, right? In terms of cotangent, y cannot be equal to zero because we can't divide by zero. It's against math law, right? The world will implode on itself. So let's play with these a little bit in terms of actual practice, right? So say we want to evaluate all six trig functions. Evaluate the six trig functions at different points, right? So say ooh, functions. So say I have a equals pi over six, right? Well, pi over six, we know, has x, y values, right? The x value is radical 3 over 2, right? We know x, our x, y values, right, are radical 3 over 2. 
and one half, right? Those are our, our X, Y values at pi over six. So we need to evaluate all six trig functions at pi over six. So we're gonna say, okay, well, what is sine? Sine of pi over six, that's our T. What is sine equal? Sine just equals Y, does it not? And sine equal y. Well, what is y? This is our x value. This is our y value. We could just say that this is one half. Cosine of pi over six. Well, cosine equals x, right? And in this case, x equals radical three over two. Now, tangent gets a little more difficult is tangent of pi over 6 equals y over x, right? So for us, that would be 1 half over radical 3 over 2. But we know how to handle a fraction over a fraction, right? We multiply it by the, the, top, the top fraction over the reciprocal of the bottom fraction, right? We flip it. You get 2 radical 3. And this is going to give me 2 over 2 times radical 3. But I can't do that. I'm going to have to multiply that by its reciprocal, which, by the way, this reduces to 1 over radical 3. And so I just multiply times radical 3 over radical 3. That's how I get rid of that square root. And I wind up with radical 3 over are we done yet? No. Right? We have to do it for all six of those. So now I'm going to go with sine, right? We're going to do the, the inverse of sine, which is cosecant. I don't know why I keep wanting to write CO. It's like I want to write the word instead of the abbreviation. Cosecant, CSC, of pi over six. Well, that equals 1 over sine or 1 over y. We can write it as 1 over y, which is 1 over 1 half, which is just 1 times 2 over 1, which is just 2. Secant of pi over 6 equals 1 over x, which is 1 over radical 3 over 2, which is the same as saying 1 times 2 over rad 3, which gives me 2 over radical 3. Can we leave it like that? No. We have to multiply it times radical 3 over radical 3, and we get 2 rad 3 over three. Yeah, tangent is, is a tough one. And we have a cotangent, though, comes a little easier. Well, sort of, because we know what tangent is, and it's just the flip of tangent. So in this case, if I go to cotangent of pi over six, now we're talking about x over y, right? So if we look at it this time, now we have radical 3 over 2 over 1 half. And so when we go to multiply that out, we don't have to actually uh, um, negotiate the denominator, that radical in the denominator. And so this becomes 2 over 1. And this is going to give me 2 rad 3 over 2. And those cancel, and I just get radical 3. Is this a lot? Yes, but do watch the video again, play with it. Um, I have a whole bunch of them here to do. I thought I'd get through more of these sample problems, but let me do, um, 
one in the well let's look at it when uh t equals pi let's try one where t is equal to pi why? Because it'll make our math a little simpler, right? Because when t equals pi, our x value is just negative 1, and our y value is 0, right? If you come back up and you look at our, right, t equals pi is going to be right here. So x is just negative 1, and y is 0. And so we're going to do all of those same operations, right? So sine is equal to let's say, sine of pi equals um so i'm losing my mind here I've, I've lost my ability to talk so, sine of pi equals our y value right which just equals zero cosine of pi equals our x value which just equals negative one tangent of pi equals our y value over our x value, right? So we have y over x, which is just 0 over negative 1, which is just 0. So our math is getting simpler when we deal with 1s and zeros, right? Uh, the inverse of sine is cosecant. So cosecant of pi is going to be 1 over zero. Can we divide by zero? No. So it's undefined. Um, secant of pi equals one over x, which is one over negative one, which is just negative one. Cotangent of pi equals, this is y over x, so cotangent equals x over y, right? Which is negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. Yes, you are. You're going to be putting in six answers, right? You're going to be finding them for all six trig functions. Um, I am going to put, I have two more examples that I wrote down um, as potential problems here on my card. Um, I'm going to end this video now because we're towards the end of class. I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Um,